Imagine you've traveled everywhere on Earth. There's nothing new to see. You've witnessed the aurora borealis from the North Pole, climbed to the top of Mount Everest. You've swam with sharks, safari around the savanna, and ran with the bulls. The only place left to go is outer space. And if you're lucky enough to have some deep pockets, space tourism looks like it's just around the corner. The idea of space tourism would have seemed like a joke a few decades ago. During the 1960s, space exploration was almost completely under the purview of government-run agencies. Well, two governments to be exact, the US and the Soviet Union. The two superpowers competed in the 1960s and 70s in what's known as the space race. It was a test of each nation's strength and intelligence, but over time, a different kind of superpower discovered space might be within their reach, the big dreaming businessman. Dennis Tito, the first space tourist, was just that, an American businessman with no previous space travel experience who was the first to pay to go into space. He apparently dropped $20 million to hop on board a Russian spacecraft, landing on the ISS in April of 2001. Experts often agree that this was the moment when the commercial space race began. Tito inspired a generation of billionaires and CEOs to strive to reach the last frontier. And in 2004, the US government made this easier to accomplish when it officially legalized private space travel. Before this, some laws had made it easier for companies to build spacecrafts and launching pads, mostly as they related to telecommunications and satellites. But this bill made it possible for human space travel to become completely private. And just six months before George W. Bush officially signed the 2004 bill into law, the first privately funded manned spacecraft left Earth's orbit, partly financed by Microsoft co-founder Paul G. Allen. But the first real major opening for private companies to make their mark in space travel came in 2011, when NASA officially ended its space shuttle program after 30 years of operation. The Obama administration decided to axe the program, choosing to direct more funding to private companies looking to build new spaceships. The move was intended to usher in an era of public-private partnerships between NASA and private space companies. The idea being that NASA would contract these companies to perform the duties its own astronauts and engineers used to do, saving the agency money and providing a chance for the free market to establish a sense of competition in getting to space. And there were plenty who were willing to take on the challenge. In the US, the industry is thriving. In 2012, SpaceX sent the first commercially built vehicle to carry cargo to the ISS a task which only government-run agencies had ever done before. SpaceX has successfully launched and landed multiple rockets since, and have even promised to send two space tourists out to orbit the moon by 2018. But not all missions have been successful. Virgin Galactic had a major setback after a pilot died during a failed test flight of one of its spaceships, causing concern that the tragedy might put their goal of creating a vibrant space tourism industry in doubt. Yet less than two years later, things were back on track for the company that dubs itself the world's first commercial space line. Over 500 people, including many famous celebrities, have already paid $250,000 for a future flight into space that only promises a few minutes of actual time up there before the vehicle re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Virgin Galactic and SpaceX aren't the only game in town either. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos has said that his space travel company, Blue Origin, could send tourists to space as early as 2018. There's still a lot of questions and concerns that need to be addressed before the private space industry can fully take off. Virgin Galactic's 2014 crash highlighted just how risky and difficult it can be to build safe and successful space vehicles. The risky nature of such endeavors, not to mention the lack of international laws and treaties governing space, makes the prospect of running a viable space travel business much more difficult. Whether or not leaving space exploration up to a generation of big dreaming entrepreneurs is a good idea, it's happening, and it's happening fast. So now I guess all of you thrill-seeking adventurers need to start asking yourselves, is the price tag worth it? How far would the industry have to advance for you to sign up?